Graft vs. Host Disease, Wikipedia Audio Graft vs. Host Disease is a medical complication following the receipt of transplanted tissue from a genetically different person. GVHD is commonly associated with stem cell transplants such as those that occur with bone marrow transplants. GVHD also applies to other forms of transplanted tissues such as solid organ transplants. White blood cells of the donor's immune system which remain within the donated tissue recognize the recipient as foreign. The white blood cells present within the transplanted tissue then attack the recipient's body's cells, which leads to GVHD. This should not be confused with a transplant rejection which occurs when the immune system of the transplant recipient rejects the transplanted tissue, GVHD occurs when the donor's immune system's white blood cells reject the recipient. The underlying principle is the same, but the details and course may differ. GVHD can also occur after a blood transfusion if the blood products used have not been irradiated or treated with an approved pathogen reduction system. In the classical sense, acute graft versus host disease is characterized by selective damage to the liver, skin, mucosa, and the gastrointestinal tract. Newer research indicates that other graft versus host disease target organs include the immune system itself, and the lungs in the form of immune mediated pneumonitis. Biomarkers can be used to identify specific causes of GVHD such as elephant in the skin. Chronic graft versus host disease also attacks the above organs, but over its long-term course can also cause damage to the connective tissue and exocrine glands. Signs and Symptoms Acute GVHD of the GI tract can result in severe intestinal inflammation, sloughing of the mucosal membrane, severe diarrhea, abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. This is typically diagnosed via intestinal biopsy. Liver GVHD is measured by the bilirubin level in acute patients. Skin GVHD results in a diffuse red maculopapular rash, sometimes in a lacy pattern. Mucosal damage to the vagina can result in severe pain and scarring, and appears in both acute and chronic GVHD. This can result in an inability to have sexual intercourse. The acute or fulminant form of the disease is normally observed within the first 100 days post-transplant, and is a major challenge to transplants owing to associated morbidity and mortality. The chronic form of graft versus host disease normally occurs after 100 days. The appearance of moderate to severe cases of CGVHD adversely influences long-term survival. Acute GVHD is staged as follows, overall grade with each organ staged individually from a low of 1 to a high of 4. Patients with grade 4 GVHD usually have a poor prognosis. If the GVHD is severe and requires intense immunosuppression involving steroids and additional agents to get under control, the patient may develop severe infections as a result of the immunosuppression and may die of infection. In the oral cavity, chronic graft versus host disease manifests as lichen planus with a higher risk of malignant transformation to oral squamous cell carcinoma in comparison to the classical oral lichen planus. Graft versus host disease associated oral cancer may have more aggressive behavior with poorer prognosis, when compared to oral cancer in non-hematopoietic stem cell transplantation patients. In the clinical setting, graft versus host disease is divided into acute and chronic forms and scored or graded on the basis of the tissue affected and the severity of the reaction. Currently, there are no reliable molecular markers reflecting the onset or clinical course of AGVHD. However, it has been shown that genes responsible for cytokine signaling 
inflammatory response, and regulation of cell cycle are differentially expressed in patients with fatal GVHD versus indolent GVHD. An immunocompetent graft is administered, with viable and functional immune cells, the recipient is immunologically different from the donor, histoincompatible, the recipient is immunocompromised and therefore cannot destroy or inactivate the transplanted cells. Billingham Criteria 3 criteria must be met in order for GVHD to occur. After bone marrow transplantation, T cells present in the graft, either as contaminants or intentionally introduced into the host, attack the tissues of the transplant recipient after perceiving host tissues as antigenically foreign. The T cells produce an excess of cytokines, including TNF-alpha and interferon gamma. A wide range of host antigens can initiate graft-versus-host disease, among them the human leukocyte antigens. However, graft-versus-host disease can occur even when HLA-identical siblings are the donors. HLA-identical siblings or HLA-identical unrelated donors often have genetically different proteins that can be presented by major histocompatibility complex molecules to the donor's T-cells, which see these antigens as foreign and so mount an immune response. Types Antigens most responsible for graft loss are HLADR, HLAB, and HLAA. While donor T cells are undesirable as effector cells of graft versus host disease, they are valuable for engraftment by preventing the recipient's residual immune system from rejecting the bone marrow graft. In addition, as bone marrow transplantation is frequently used to treat cancer, mainly leukemias, donor T cells have proven to have a valuable graft versus tumor effect. A great deal of current research on allogeneic bone marrow transplantation involves attempts to separate the undesirable graft vs host disease aspects of T-cell physiology from the desirable graft versus tumor effect. This type of GVHD is associated with transfusion of unirradiated blood to immunocompromised recipients. It can also occur in situations in which the blood donor is homozygous and the recipient is heterozygous for an HLA haplotype. It is associated with higher mortality due to involvement of bone marrow lymphoid tissue, however the clinical manifestations are similar to GVHD resulting from bone marrow transplantation. Transfusion-associated GVHD is rare in modern medicine. It is almost entirely preventable by controlled irradiation of blood products to inactivate the white blood cells within. Thymus transplantation may be said to be able to cause a special type of GVHD because the recipient's thymocytes would use the donor thymus cells as models when going through the negative selection to recognize self-antigens and could therefore still mistake own structures in the rest of the body for being non-self. This is a rather indirect GVHD because it is not directly cells in the graft itself that causes it but cells in the graft that make the recipient's T cells act like donor T cells. It can be seen as a multiple organ autoimmunity in xenotransplantation experiments of the thymus between different species. Autoimmune disease is a frequent complication after human allogeneic thymus transplantation, found in 42% of subjects over one year post-transplantation. However, this is partially explained by the fact that the indication itself, that is, complete de George syndrome, increases the risk of autoimmune disease. A GVHD-like disease called thymoma-associated multi-organ autoimmunity can occur in patients with thymoma. In these patients rather than a donor being a source of pathogenic T cells, the patient's own malignant thymus produces self-directed T cells. 
This is because the malignant thymus is incapable of appropriately educating developing thymocytes to eliminate self-reactive T cells. The end result is a disease virtually indistinguishable from GVHD. The pathophysiology of GVHD includes three phases. Activation of APC occurs in the first stage of GVHD. Prior to hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, radiation, or chemotherapy results in damage and activation of host tissues, especially intestinal mucosa. This allows the microbial products to enter and stimulate pro-inflammatory cytokines such as IL-1 and TNF-alpha. These pro-inflammatory cytokines increase the expression of MHC and adhesion molecules on APCs, thereby increasing the ability of APC to present antigen. The second phase is characterized by the activation of effector cells. Activation of donor T cells further enhances the expression of MHC and adhesion molecules, chemokines, and the expansion of CD8 plus and CD4 plus T cells and guest B cells. In the final phase, these effector cells migrate to target organs and mediate tissue damage, resulting in multi organ failure. Causes Transfusion-associated GVHD Intravenously administered glucocorticoids, such as prednisone, are the standard of care in acute GVHD and chronic GVHD. The use of these glucocorticoids is designed to suppress the T-cell-mediated immune onslaught on the host tissues, however, in high doses, this immune suppression raises the risk of infections and cancer relapse. Therefore, it is desirable to taper off the post-transplant high-level steroid doses to lower levels, at which point the appearance of mild GVHD may be welcome, especially in HLA mismatched patients, as it is typically associated with a graft versus tumor effect. Cyclosporin and tacrolimus are inhibitors of calcineurin. Both substances are structurally different but have the same mechanism of action. Cyclosporin binds to the cytosolic protein peptidylprolyl cis-trans isomerase A, while tacrolimus binds to the cytosolic protein peptidylprolyl cis-trans isomerase FKBP12. These complexes inhibit calcineurin, block dephosphorylation of the transcription factor NFAT of activated T-cells and its translocation into the nucleus. Standard prophylaxis involves the use of cyclosporin for six months with methotrexate. Cyclosporin levels should be maintained above 200 ng-ml. Other substances that have been studied for GVHD prophylaxis include, for example, serolimus, pentostatin, and alemtuzumab. Thymus transplantation Thymoma-associated multi-organ autoimmunity Mechanism Prevention Treatment in August 2017 the US FDA approved ibrutinib to treat chronic GVHD after failure of one or more other systemic treatments. There are a large number of clinical trials either ongoing or recently completed in the investigation of graft versus host disease treatment and prevention. Currently, there are no reliable molecular markers reflecting the onset or clinical course of AGVHD. However, it has been shown that genes responsible for cytokine signaling, inflammatory response, and regulation of cell cycle are differentially expressed in patinets with fatal GVHD versus indolent GVHD. On May 17, 2012, Osiris Therapeutics announced that Canadian health regulators approved Procimal its drug for acute graft-versus-host disease in children who have failed to respond to steroid treatment. Procimal is the first stem cell drug to be approved for a systemic disease. 
Clinical Research In January 2016, Mesoblast released results of a PHASC2 clinical trial on 241 children with acute graft-versus-host disease, that was not responsive to steroids. The trial was of a mesenchymal stem cell therapy known as Remestemcelel or MSC100-4. Survival rate was 82% for those who showed some improvement after one month, and in the long term 72% for those that showed little effect after one month.